What's going on, everybody? It's Jonathan here with the Integrated Entrepreneur and Keith. Keith, what's going on, big dog? What up, yo? All right. So was, we, we are going to go over, if you're in business, we're going to go over one of the most important things that you can uh, handle, right? As an entrepreneur is dealing with unhappy clients. It's going to happen to every single person that's in business. And I feel like it's more prevalent today than this would have been 10 years ago, definitely more than 20 years ago. And I think part of that is culture and people's attention to detail. I also think part of that is how quickly information is shared and gets out there. We live in a digital world where if you did something 20 or 30 years ago, it might take a very long time, positive or negative to spread. Today, right. that could happen instantly. So... We'll go through a lot of that, but I think we should start, like, why do clients get pissed off? The main reason why people get upset is because there is a difference between what they have received and what they were expecting. Yeah. That's usually the biggest differentiator. I think it goes in a layer. Did they get what they expected? Yeah. Keith, what's your thought on that? I think it's that, but it's one step before that. It's just unclear communication. It's lack of expectations being set in the sale or in the conversation of whatever the thing is, whether it's a service that you're going to provide or a deliverable that you're giving away or an item. But it's always lack of expectation. And dude, listen, like oftentimes it's not on our side. But it's our problem and, and you got to deal with it. Yeah. And if you get a complaint and your stomach doesn't turn into knots, you're an asshole. I don't know how you do that. Because every time someone's not happy with me, I feel like it's the end of my fucking entire business. <laughs> like, it's the most extreme thing for me, right? Until I can solve it, right? So to your point earlier, the most important thing for you to do is to learn how to handle a dissatisfied client period yeah if you don't and guys there, there's an easy step what happened if you don't know how to handle them what happens dude yeah if you don't handle it quick it escalates and not only does it escalate it'll turn into a bad review which will turn into lost business all right and i believe firmly that you should always treat people how you want to be treated it says it in the bible that's first and foremost and two it's just best practices, right? So if I mess up or I make a mistake, I do own it right away. And there are times that you might not have made a mistake and that customer is just being unreasonable, all right? We're not talking about that particular instance right now. And that happens because we have a victim mindset across the majority of people. Most people are comfortable and they want to play the victim, all right? Here's a great example, and this just happened. Uh, I take my truck, I take the TRX to a further away Dodge dealership for service, okay? And I do that for a couple reasons. One, they will work and communicate with me the way I ask them to, meaning they'll text me, they're not gonna call me 30 times, I'll text or email when the car is done. Two, <clears throat> they make it very easy. I drop the car off there, they, send me back in an Uber and they pick me up in an Uber. Okay. Which is great. And then they are usually somewhat reasonable. Obviously it's not cheap to go get it serviced at Dodge. I could go to any mechanic and get it serviced for half the price, but they back it up. And I just got my 10,000 mile service done there last week, probably Thursday. The problem is this Friday comes or actually it didn't even happen Friday. It happened Thursday when I got the truck back to the office. And I saw a massive scratch in the side rear door. Now, I know that happened there because I intentionally parked my truck when nobody can ding the driver's side. And it only goes from <clears throat> my office to my house. That, tr that scratch was not there. I brought it to their attention that day. I followed up two or three more times. They still have not addressed it. They said they were going to check the cameras. They've never gotten back to me. 
One, regardless of how they resolve it at this point, they've lost my business. Now it's, am I going to leave them a, a shitty review or not? And it sucks because they built up so much goodwill on the first two visits. I'm not asking them to repaint the entire vehicle, but this happened while it was at your place. Fix it. It's an easy fix and they're not doing it or they haven't done it yet. So that's a obviously a valid complaint, right? That guy should handle it. And then you'd have a raving fan. You get all my business. I'm never going to take it anywhere else. But you didn't do it. So you have to view these things as an opportunity to build yeah. a raving fan, to build a brand loyalist. And if you don't, you can't get upset when you don't have a business that you're proud of in a year or two years. No, I believe if you shit on your client base long enough, your client base will shit back on you times 10. And you won't have a business. And I mean, who you and I know is shits on the names of people that every time we hear their name, it's either right after a negative comment or right before a negative comment. It's never good. Yeah. And and I can only sit back and imagine being that person, knowing that so many people are out bashing my business based on how I treat people. But dude, when, when I have one person who's aggravated, it flips me the fuck out. I can't imagine yep. everyone or 80%, right, having that same concept because the re the other side of this conversation is if that happens, now you're in just a consistent chase of new clients to stay in business. Yes. And I don't know about you, but mm -hmm. chasing new clients and prospecting on a personal level is like, fuck it. I'd rather just hang myself. That's a miserable, always having to catch a new client, always having to go out and bang doors. And dude, I can't do that. It's not, some people are great at it. I'm That's not saying not it's the worst thing in the world. It's just not me. Correct. That's not a business, guys. I got, dude, I know you some people that crush, but I just can't do it. I don't have the mental capacity to do that shit every day. Yeah. Guys, what's the process, right? When you're dealing with an upset customer, figure out why they're upset. Okay. Is, if, is it valid or not? Even if it's not valid, I would apologize and say, Hey, Keith, I'm sorry. You feel that way. Most people want to be heard out. So if you hear them out, maybe they'll tell you what would make it right too, and then go and fix it. Okay. So how do we get out of the, make sure this doesn't happen, communicate, communicate up front. But if it does happen, apologize, try to make it right by any and all means necessary. And then circle back with that person to make sure that they are good after. So I'll give you an example that this is the most common one for my business. Someone applies and for whatever reason, we just can't get it done. And the reality is if I wasn't able to get it done, they're probably not getting done somewhere else because I have every program. So I explain that to them. And instead of just saying, Hey, you're declined because nobody wants to hear that. I'll let them know what, why they were declined and what steps they can do to fix it so they can get approved in the future. And then I'll even point them to the direction of those people I know that can help them. So if it's credit related, I'll send them for credit repair. If it's business credit, I can do that internally. If it's cash flow, I train them and I teach them how to maintain and have better cash flow. And usually just that little bit of information showing that I care is enough that they will still have a good experience and come back in a month or two because I showed that I actually gave a shit enough to help them fix what's wrong. And I told them we can try it again in a month or two. You have to figure out what that is in your business. There is going to be a, a point a lot of people fail, okay, in your business, especially if it's a service-based business. Figure that out. And then what can you do when they reach that level to still help them? And it doesn't have to be monetary. That's helped me a lot. Keith, what are your thoughts on that? No, I agree, man. The moment you figure out someone's upset, just I jump on a phone call. I'm not going to read your text message. I'm not going to read your email and take it how I feel it should be taken. We're going to get on the phone so I can hear your reflection. We can, and typically it's a Google meet, right? So I can see your face at, at the same time. I'm going to agree. It's like, you got to, you got to get belly to belly however you can with people to figure out what the hell's a real issue. And just to your point, let people talk. Don't try to, one of the biggest mistakes that I made back in the day was I would always try to stick up for my business and, and what I did. 
right, in my profession. In reality, no one gives a fuck what you do or how great you are. <laughs> They're pissed off because you didn't. That's yeah, for them. <laughs> like, yeah. Or they feel you didn't do it. Now it's on you to communicate differently, right? If you delivered yeah. and they're asking, now there's there's people that are going to scam you and try to fuck you over and take your money and get your money back. There is that out there, right? I'm talking about you legitimately know you fucked up. You got to own those. But if someone calls in and they're just pissy because the color isn't what they thought it was or some stupid shit that's on them, that doesn't mean you can't work with them and still come up with a solution. But those aren't the ones you just mm-hmm. go right to the give me my money back type shit. Because there's alternatives and depending on your business, it's discounts in the future or whatever the case is to make it right. But for the most part, just with a face-to-face conversation, like I'm, I bat a thousand. I'm a thousand for a thousand on making people happy after I realize that they're dissatisfied. I haven't lost one of those yet. Yeah. And a big reason, Keith. I just do what. You can't, don't apologize over text, guys. Oh, no. Keith said it three times, and I just want to make sure everyone picked up belly to belly or eye to eye, Zoom or a phone call. Why? Not, because not because when, I don't give a fuck about like text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but here's the reality, guys. When we communicate, there's so many different ways. Just besides hearing somebody, all right, they're hearing the words that they're saying, it's how they're saying it, it's the tone, it's the intention, it's the voice inflection, right? Mm-hmm. It's the pace. There's so much more you can pick up. And then if you are on a Zoom, okay, some people can't hide facial expressions. Guess what? I'm one of them, okay? This face has fucking closed captions permanently on, all right? It's a blessing when things are great, and it's a curse if I'm upset, all right? And it's, <laughs> bro, it's so fucking obvious. Something I'm like you because you're not full of shit. You just, it is what it is. You're authentic. <laughs> They either fucking hate you with a passion or they like you. No in between. You were right. I don't mind (laughs) that. At least I know where you stand. At least I know if I've pissed you off, I know it. If you're okay with me at the moment, I know that too. (laughs) That's true. You're you're right. You're right. (laughs) I don't got to guess. Yes. So, guys, if you guys take one thing away, like everything we gave you on this is huge, especially running a business, but maybe you're not running a business. Maybe you're running a sales team. Or maybe you're in sales. This all or leadership applies. or any, any Just, of that. And here's the thing, guys. If you take away anything, take away how you view it, okay? Because if you viewed it as this client's calling in and it's a nuisance and I'm bothered by it, all right, you should just shut the doors, all right? And the reason I say that is you're not going to be able to resolve anything else that you really need to resolve and you really don't care about the clients. And this competitive market, you have to care. That's a big differentiator. And people know if you're full of shit or people know if you really care. The next part of that thing is like, fix it. It ain't, it's not hard. If it's a valid mistake, do everything you can to fix it, make it right. Because you viewing it as an opportunity to build a raving fan, to build a brand loyalist is a separator between you doubling and tripling your business or are you potentially shutting the doors mm-hmm. simple all right i hope this helped you guys keith you have anything to add no just do the right thing man people know do what they tell you i got a lot of fibrous hairs they're not up on the top of my head though <laughs> clearly Those left. all Those right guys left. you heard it here <laughs> not many left they did the wave waving goodbye just like we are guys we'll catch you on the next episode appreciate you guys